Welcome to God Encounters. So glad you've joined us today. Uh, today, my guest is Taz Sada, and his wife has joined us too, Karen. And we're so happy to have you on the show. We did a first part, so hopefully you've seen that. And this is a continuation of that show. So um, we heard your testimony, a good part of your testimony in the first half. Um, I want to ask you a question. So you have two children. And how did your children react to your conversion when you accepted Christ? That's, that was really amazing, too, because uh, you know, I raised my kids to be Muslims. That's natural. As, as a born Muslim, all my children followed that. So that God took care of right from the beginning. Mm. I woke up the day after I was saved, and uh, I walked out of the bedroom, and my son was 18 years old at the time. He was shaving. I stopped, looked at him, and I said, Son, I want to share something with you. He said, What, Dad? He said, Yesterday I gave my heart to Jesus. I think I become a Christian. See, I still <laughs> wasn't sure. <laughs> right. His eyes got so big, his mouth dropped, shaving cream all over <laughs> his face. He comes running to me. He's hugging me. He's crying. I'm crying. And then he started saying, oh, Dad, I'm so happy for you. And Aww. I stopped to think for a minute, wait a minute, why is the boy happy for me? Right. I said, son, why are you happy for me? He said, Dad, three months ago I gave my heart to Jesus. Wow. But I never told anybody. Wow. I was shocked. Wow. Said, wow. That was amazing. And that really, when he gave his heart to Jesus three months before, he went and talked to our pastor mm -hmm. of the church where he was saved. And he said, what am I going to do now? My father finds out he's going to kill me. He right. probably would have. Yeah. The pastor was very wise. He said, son, you go back to your father's house and you love him more than you've ever loved, mm. him, loved him before and leave the rest to God. And the church began a prayer chain for me 24 hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow for three months until they made my life so <laughs> miserable <laughs> I couldn't look it up. Wow. And and that really was a miracle of God. Mm. It's, it's, uh, God was chasing you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of my son. That's really. awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Our daughter also is is uh, is involved in our ministry. My son is, uh, our son is, uh, is a, a worship, a uh, pastor of worship at his church. And Lovely and very gifted in that area. And, awesome. and uh, my our daughter is involved with us also in the work. And maybe Karen, you want to share f how Farah came? How Farah energy. came to the Lord? Well, yeah. she actually was the last one to come because she was a little skeptical of her father. She had not really believed. Uh, and if you read the book, you'll understand why. A uh, once an Arafat man. Um, he had left us at one point in time, and we didn't think he was coming back, but mm -hmm. God brought him back, and that was really traumatic for her. And so she didn't really trust him. Mm -hmm. So, um, And she'd already asked him when she was 10 years old uh, about Islam, and what she really wanted, though, was a relationship with her dad, and he didn't really understand that at that time. So it was hard for her, and then... Uh, when we, we came to know Jesus and uh, I became born again, rather than just knowing of Jesus and being able to pray to him and he would answer my prayers, I now knew the born again experience after watching him for so many days and how amazing it was. But Farah was um, hard to come and she was 15 and of course rebellious. That's a tough age for girls. <laughs> it's Any a very Girls tough and age. boys, okay. <laughs> But she went to one, uh, actually we were uh, traveling 40 miles away to go to the church that we were uh, going mm. to. And we wanted to be there every moment the doors were open, of course, because we were all wide-eyed and, and uh, loving Jesus. So um, she did not want to move and we wanted to move closer to our church. So the pastor very wisely said, you know, what you guys really need to do is just start praying, and you'll see. <laughs> and so she, one weekend, very uh, 
uh, innocently went to a uh, youth rally with her youth group called Acquire the Fire. Oh. Ron Luce. Nice. And uh, a, she spent the whole weekend there and came back. We picked her up at the church and she put her, her backpack in and her pillow in and went, I said, well, how, it, how was it? She goes, oh my gosh. She said, mom, the Holy Spirit this and the Holy Spirit that. And I went, oh, <laughs> whoa, what <laughs> happened to her? <laughs> you know. And finally she said, you know, Jesus is just more important than any place I live. I think we need to move. Wow. <laughs> we both started crying. We were wow. driving in the front of the, of the car. We both started yeah. crying. Went, Thank uh, you, it, Lord. It, it was amazing for <laughs> me how God wow. really, saved. Yeah, His grace saved us both and, mm. and our family. Mm. And so uh, I, I can tell you how grateful mm. I am. Mm. I cannot tell we you how grateful I am to the Lord. We were His all grace. on the verge of divorce and our family splitting up mm. when Jesus came mm. into our lives. He's a God yeah. of restoration. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He is Amen. awesome. He is. So tell us more. So after your family's all come to Christ now, yeah. what was your journey like? The challenge was really with my own family mm. uh, back in Qatar and, and it was hard on them because of course, uh, I, I become a traitor to them mm. to convert to Islam, uh, mm -hmm. to Christianity. Mm -hmm. So uh, they took it very hard, and I understand that. You know, I dishonored my family mm. by what I done. And, uh, and uh, so my oldest brother was really angry that he was, he sent assassins after me to kill me. Mm. For f 11 years, he just kept after me, trying to convince me to come back or force me to come back to Islam. Eventually, in 2004, after I visited with Yasser Arafat, I decided I wanted to go and see my family, no matter what the cost is. So I mm. called Karen and said, honey, I really want to go and visit my family. She freaked out. I mean, of course, naturally. Yeah. But she understood that uh, God is with us, mm. and uh, I felt peace to go. Now, did she go with you, or did you no. go along? Okay. Uh, she was in the oh States. Okay. And so she, she sent uh, after our intercessors to pray <laughs> for us. I was going to say, I'm sure she yeah. was praying the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I went, I called my brother and said, I'm coming to see you. He said, well, you must have a short memory. Do you remember I'm going to kill you? I said, well, yes, I do remember, but give me 15 minutes. Let me kiss father's head and mother's head and your head, because he's the firstborn. Mm. Then you can kill me. So oh, it's your f your life, and he hung up. So I flew in into Qatar, into Doha airport, and I came out, and there is my brother standing outside with his gun, two of my younger brothers, and and my older sister and her husband. She had to have another person with her because a female in that culture is not counted as a full person, as a half person. Mm. So she brought her husband with her. Mm. I knew exactly what he was doing. So I put my suitcase down and I went to him. And I kissed him on the right side of his neck. In our culture, that's saying to my father, I honor you and I submit to your authority. Do as you wish. Mm. And I stepped back. And that's when my brother just broke down and he grabbed me and hugged me and he's crying and I'm crying. And um, wow, I tell you, it had to be the Holy Spirit went ahead of me and gave me favor. Right. There is no question in my mind. You know, his reaction was so powerful. Mm. Took me to his house and then my father came. And Why have you dishonored us this way? I said, Father, my Bible teaches me to honor my father and my mother, and I've come to honor you. I said, what, you've come back to Islam? I said, no. I came here so that you can kill me. I keep my faith. You regain your honor among your friends. We both went. And I went down to his feet, kissed his feet, pulled me down and said, sit down. Tell me what happened. So I shared my whole testimony with him, two and a half hours just sharing with him 
about my life and how my life changed and what. At the end, he got up and he put his hand on my head and he said, I believe Allah have called you for a special purpose. I don't want to argue about Allah word. <laughs> I just went ahead. Mm -hmm. He said, I bless you. Wow. And with that blessing, no one can touch me anymore. Wow. And that really totally changed my whole family. My my brothers, of course, were not happy about that and were arguing with my dad. And but at least I came out alive. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, God really used us eventually after that. Mm -hmm. Eventually, it really began the ministry, the actual ministry, by going back to the Middle East and, and start uh, working in Gaza Strip and then into Jericho. And basically, to our calling is to build a bridge of peace between Arabs and mm. Jews and raising up a new generation of Palestinians and Jews that have a different heart towards each other. This is my calling. This is what our calling is. Wow. That's what we do. I hear there are the Palestinian church is really growing. Can you? Palestinian church is struggling. Uh, that challenge is very heavy. Right. Uh, but yet, there is a freedom in worship in that. For me, personally, of course, I have to be very careful because I converted. They still look at me as a traitor, but the uh, Palestinian Authority is not an extremist religious organization. So when it comes to religion, they they overlook mm. so many things as long as we're doing good things for the people. Mm -hmm. But uh, the church in in general in the West Bank, they have the freedom and they have uh, uh, now as the Palestinian Authority, as Islam and Muslims, there are challenges, hidden challenges that we don't see. But yes, God is, is building his kingdom in the West Bank and, and in praise Israel too. Praise God. Can you share some, um, some God encounters or miracles that you have encountered with your ministry, how God has used you? Yeah. Uh, God, amazing. You know, uh, I continued to study uh, the Bible and study more about the the church and and one day I was sitting at the chair at my dining room and I was studying and I had a vision a vision of a long road with churches on one side synagogues on the next and mosques after and the Lord had me taken to the church to alert the church to the danger of Islam thus sweeping the nation. Mm. This is was in December of 2000. Okay. And then I saw myself going to synagogues and seeking forgiveness from the Jews for what I've done against mm. Israel and the Jews. Then the Lord take me to the mosques to preach the gospel. Mm. When I saw the picture with the mosque and said I woke up, basically. I, I was not asleep, but I was seeing a vision. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I'll go to the church, <laughs> I'll go to the synagogue, but not to the mosques. <laughs> you know what these people will do to me. And the Lord kept talking to me about this, and eventually I realized and talked to my wife mm -hmm. and, and talked to my mentor, Charlie, and, and they both realized that God is calling us to, to do this. So we began. In February of 2001, I began our journey, drove on a long road, not made any plans financially or where to go. The Lord said, go, I'll show you and I'll provide for you. Mm. And so I went to, San to uh, uh, Colorado Springs first to get some materials I needed from Arab ministry there, and then drove out on the road. I got to a fork where I had to go right or left. <laughs> and that's when I called Karen <coughs> and I said, honey, I am really needing some prayers here uh -huh. because I don't know which one to go. Going to the right, we're going to New York. In New York, there are a lot of Muslims there. So that 
I thought, mm, this might be the way mm. where the Lord wants mm. to take me. But I needed assurance. So mm. I called Karen and began to <laughs> pray together and mm. she prayed and and I sat, didn't go anywhere. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then Karen called me. Mm-hmm. And uh, she said, honey, I think, you know, you have a friend in, in uh, North Bend. Seattle, Washington. In Seattle, Washington, right outside of Seattle. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's where you need to go. Mm-hmm. And I thought, th- remember, I said, yes, yes, of course. Mm-hmm. So that began our first ministry in Seattle, Washington, mm-hmm. and here in Portland. Wow. We <laughs> began working on both sides. So this was the beginning of our ministry. Wow. In right here. That's right awesome. Here, right here where we are. Wow. Full that's circle. That's one of the uh, visions that mm-hmm. God has given mm-hmm. us here. Mm-hmm. Wow. Another one in the Philippines. I was looking for my nanny. I went to the island of Mindanao where she was from. And I was with a team of, uh, of my uh, colleagues from our church. We were ministering to Christians in that and also reaching to Muslims. Island of Mindanao is controlled by the notorious Abu Sayyaf, mm-hmm. a terrorist. And mm-hmm. it's a Muslim island mm. and uh, I woke up on a Friday morning and I felt I needed to wear my Muslim outfit I said Lord what, what, wha- what is this on my heart and I felt I needed to wear that Muslim outfit so I talked to my team and I said this is what the Lord I feel is telling me so they said sure the Lord is telling you to do that let's do that and go out to the market. So we go out to the market, there are a lot of Muslims and they're dressed in Muslim outfits. So you fit right in. Yeah, and he said, the Lord also spoke to my heart to go to a mosque. I didn't know where that mosque is. So we went in the market and everybody calling, because I'm dressed in in an outfit like Saudis. Yeah. Hey, holy man, holy man, how Mm. are you? And you know, in the market people. And I kept talking to them and finally asked them, where is the mosque? And they told me where the mosque is. So I said to my team, look, I want to go in the mosque. They were terrified. What? I'm going to go to the mosque. I feel the Lord is telling me to go there. I, uh, here is what I need you to do. I need you guys to go around, circle mm. around this mosque mm. for seven times and pray. Like Jericho. Yes. Okay. And pray that the Lord will give us favor there. Mm. So I walked into the mosque and I sat, and then the leader of the mosque, the Imam, comes and he can see that I was foreigner. He come and where are you from? I said oh, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. So oh, really from Saudi Arabia? I said yes. And, and uh, I said Imam, I I want to share something with you. The Lord changed my heart and I converted and become a, a follower of Jesus. And, and I'm looking at this imam and it's like his, his eyes are glossy. Hmm. And, and he looked at me and he goes, would you mind to share with our people for five minutes? I said, of course not. <laughs> I'll be happy to. So he comes and, and the church began the mosque begins the sermon and the prayers and and then he called me up to share and I was sharing my <laughs> my testimony with them and speaking about Jesus and oh my word I realized the m- the m- the mosque the imam the he leader of the mosque God have closed his eyes and his ears he was not listening to what I was saying but people are listening and they are getting angry and I finished five minutes. I was right on time, and I went back and sat down. Were you trembling at all, or did no, you just feel the power all. of the Holy Spirit on you? I was just feeling the Holy Spirit. Uh, the power of the Holy Spirit was on me. I yeah. I, r- I sensed that so yeah. clearly. And the Imam just got up, and he could not even talk. And he closed the session, and <coughs> and I wanted to go to talk to him. And he looked at me, and he goes, "Don't say a word. Just get out of here." Because they're talking in their language. I didn't know what they were. And they were angry. They were talking to him. Yeah. And he said, just get out of here. Go. 
So I went out. My people are standing outside, and they're just done. What have you done? I said, let's get out of here fast. And I said to them before I left, I said, you know, I'm going to be speaking tonight at the, at the uh, city hall area. So if you like to come and listen more, come. So you already had that set up. That so was you already that set up, seat. yeah, okay. that evening. And so we went out there and began to give my testimony openly to the people, and Catholics, Muslims. And, mm. and I tell you, I mean, when I did the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, altar call, oh my goodness. I mean, they flooded. Praise God. They flooded wow. on. Wow. S- asking. Oh my gosh. And, and gave the, the, uh, uh, the call and they began to give their heart to Jesus. Mm. And went down to pray for them. And this, this uh, lady, uh, she said that she never heard from her ear from birth. And mm. people know her and the translator were telling me. So I said, listen, let me pray for you then. And I laid my hand on her and I started praying and suddenly she's screaming, I can hear you, mm-hmm. I can hear you. Oh. And she was just jumping. And yeah. And the next person, a man next to her standing, he had something so ugly looking on his knees. And uh, he wanted a, a prayer for it. So I prayed for him and that whatever it was, it just fell. Praise God. Just fell on the floor. Wow. And no marking at all and if everybody started screaming and oh praise the lord and and yeah. everybody's i'm excited of course yeah. the lord is responding right. <laughs> and uh then the word came out to abu sayyaf group so they come started hunting me and and they would come to a meeting about an hour after we finish and leave god have really Watched over you and Watched protected over you. Us. Wow. That's for sure. So that it makes you um, happy when you actually listen to the Lord when he tells you something that you really aren't comfortable doing, knowing that he's going to cover you in the long run and do miraculous works. I love that. And, and that's really the encouragement that yes. the Lord uh, encourages us to, to know that we are on the right track. Yes. The Lord spoke to me from the beginning and from proverb, from the early days of my salvation. As I was reading the Bible, and I read in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, and it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways acknowledge him and I will set your path straight. And I read that one time. And later on in my walk, anytime I am tr- feel troubled, these verses mm. comes into my head. Until I began to reread the Bible and found it in Proverbs mm. and realized that it was actually in the Bible. Mm-hmm. And so that began to be my, my, uh, my life verse and mm-hmm. gave me the encouragement mm-hmm. to know that God is with me all the time. Amen. Mm. Yeah. That's mm. awesome. Yeah. Well, we are running out of time, but is there something else you could share quickly? One more way that God's used you in your ministry powerfully um, before I have you pray over the audience. You know, the work that we are doing right now is really to reach uh, the new generation, the mm. young generation, mm. the children, raise up. Palestinians in particular, Arabs in general, Muslims, uh, to to change the mind of terror to a mind of peace. Good. And we realized from early on when we went to Gaza, and it was really my wife's vision to reach to the children. Mm-hmm. So we started mm-hmm. a school for kindergarten, mm-hmm. oh. uh, starting with the children, with these kids, and uh, and realized that's where God wants us to change. <coughs> Raise up a new generation yes, with a new hope. And Get so that's where we began. Schools in Jericho and in Jerusalem also. Mm. We have school for Arab and Jewish children together. Mm-hmm. Nice. Working to raise up a new generation with a new hope. Yes. To bring peace. Yes. So are you seeing a, a change there oh in the goodness, mindset? Yeah. And praise God. Yes. 
get them while they're young you know yeah. train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart exactly. from it so that's the verse that we really cling to our heart and we go by that is awesome wow yeah wow 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 well um i would like you to um however the holy spirit leads mm. um to say a prayer over our listening audience mm. um right now because there are you know the greater portland area there's there's all kinds of faiths out there what mm. could you pray and mm. say that might help mm. them to realize the savior that you've come to know hallelujah yes indeed you know we see so much uh, as we travel around the world and especially in the united states and i see uh the division within the country itself it's really on my heart it's a huge burden on my heart mm. uh about america america is the greatest country on this earth and i've experienced that personally I've seen a lot of the world, the rest of the world, and I know and believe that. And so to see the break in the b brokenness and, and the division within the, the country mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. is on my heart. And I'd like to pray for that first. Yes, please. You join me, honey. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this privilege that you have given me to glorify you in this uh, in this interview, Lord. Mm. Lord, we don't have any purpose in this life but to build your kingdom. Yes. And Lord, you brought me to this nation, America. You have blessed America so much throughout the history because America trusted in you. Mm. But Lord, I see lately there is such a division such a brokenness mm -hmm. within the country itself and it's burdening me and breaking my heart to see this great nation that god have developed have designed have raised to be so broken mm -hmm. so lord i want to take this moment to lift up america to you mm -hmm. lord bless yes. this nation yes. Bless America, bless mm -hmm. our president, yes. Donald Trump, mm -hmm. and his leadership. Mm -hmm. Lord, give him yes. favor yes. Mm -hmm. as he walk, as he speak, mm -hmm. to bring this nation into unity yes. again, mm -hmm. to honor you. And Lord, I lift up the church to you in America. Mm -hmm. yes, this is a time of favor for the church in America. And Lord, yes. we pray that the church will wake up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And 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 use the power that you have given within the church to build up yes. your kingdom, Lord. Mm -hmm. Draw people to yourself, Lord. 